Shalom and blessings. May grace and peace be multiplied to you. What a joy it is to be able to share with you again this apostolic reforming movement session. It's normally called the arm session where we dive into deep things pertaining to scripture and we seek to give or I seek to give meat to those of you who have that uh, desire or the ability to receive it. So I bid you shalom saints and blessings to all of you. This is the day that Yahweh has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Of course I will always ask of you to ensure that the video quality and audio quality are fine. Additionally please let me know whether you can hear uh, whether you are able to uh, receive notifications as well. If not or if you are, please share this with uh, someone else who may not be able to do so. I thank those of you who have already begun to share the broadcast. We've been having some challenges with Facebook where persons say that they do not receive notifications. So if you don't mind, I would certainly be delighted to know that you can invite others who are normally here with us or you can share with them. I'd be certainly grateful. Thank you for the feedback, Keola. Thank you so much. Yahweh be praised for his goodness to us. Amen. His love is amazing. And I am certainly overjoyed to be able to share with you. Thank you, Pastor Woods. I appreciate it. All right. So like I said, many people do not receive notifications when I'm live. I don't know if it's just me or whatever it is. But thank you, son. I appreciate all the feedback. So we're good. Great. All right. Excellent. So now that I receive feedback from you about the quality, I'd appreciate it if you can notify others. Thank you for those of you who are sharing with us because persons really want or they long for these sessions. So let's ensure that they have them. Amen? Great. We're speaking this evening to what you see, which is Torah, the Torah or the law. And then the question is, where are these consequences? Some of you may be aware of a situation that arose and continues to arise where people perceive that, and this may help those of you who, like I say, I'm saying, who really desire to know more or to dive deeper into truth uh, regarding certain matters. Minata, good to see you. Shalom. You really want to be equipped as a saint. Thank you, Apostle Arp. You want to be equipped as a saint to give an answer, not only for your faith, but also to contend for the faith that was delivered to you. You want to be able as a saint to not have to avoid and flee uh, discussions with certain groups of people or, a cert or people of a certain ilk or a certain mindset or nature. You must be able to be and that's the apostle's job. You must be able to be able uh, to be equipped to sit and strongly present doctrinal matters that are so powerful that false teachers don't want to deal with you. Hence, on this matter of the law, as promised, many things popped up between that. But I will continue to expound so that you as saints can be fully aware and have a clear understanding of Yahweh's word as it pertains to the law, which is the law of Moshi, as it's called. But something even more important than that, you will see the hypocrisy of those who try to tell you to keep it. Now, those of you who are familiar with Core Ministries International and familiar with, uh, with me and those who would have surrounded me are aware of a situation in which someone has departed and the cause for departure lies in or surrounds the perception that or the false teaching that you have to keep the law. What happens in many instances, even with the Adventists and those who are 
calling themselves Hebrew Israelites and all the rest of it. You'll discover as you see tonight, or if you watch rebroadcasts or you may have commented and you can see, you can follow people's reactions. You'll discover that many people who say that you have to keep the law cannot tell you precisely which law you have to keep or which group of laws you have to keep. And the most important thing they will talk about tonight is they would not even risk speaking to the consequences. Now, as we begin this broadcast, Shalom Pastor Jay, let me, let me, let me see whether those of you who are here, some of you, can take the risk or be bold enough to respond to this question in a very honest way. Regina said the video is choppy on her end. It may be from you, I hope. Is it fine? I don't want to take the risk of using my other um, network. If someone is streaming a movie or something, that may be a challenge. I'm rich. Is the video stream okay? I don't want anybody to miss this as long as it's up to me. Pastor Woods, are we streaming fine? So, okay, Lorette says chopping his end too. Right, let me see. Let, let, hold on. Don't leave me. Stay right where you are. This should be better. Okay, Pastor Woodley, you uh, tell me if it's good now. Somebody says it's a bit choppy. I switched to Digicel, uh, to my mobile data. Let's see if that'll be better. Is it better now? Ah, there you go. Somebody says better. I'm good. We we'll get this right. As long as the video stabilized, then we begin to talk. Ah, good. My son said it's good. I believe him. And I believe my other son. There you go. Perfectly <laughs> good. Great. Okay. So, thank you for sharing. Please answer this question as honestly as you can. All right? It's not a trick question, by the way. Very straightforward question. Answer the question as honestly as you can, and let's see if you'll be able to uh, follow. I pray that you are, as Yahweh gives you wisdom. How many, thank you so much, Tawana. How many of you have ever heard the law presented to you when they say you have to keep the law? How many of you have ever heard this? teaching presented to you as a set of instructions you must not kill you must not steal you must not lie you must not have any false gods you know I'm speaking to the, the head is straight to the commandments now what they call the ten commandments you must not covet you must not commit adultery you must not you must honor your mother and your father who's ever heard the law presented in that manner it's not a trick question. Very straightforward question. Has anyone ever heard the law? When people say you have to keep the commandments or you have to keep the law, you must, oh, of course, Sabbath. You have to keep the Sabbath day. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Have you ever heard the law presented to you in that manner? I have a yes so far. Great. So you're answering. Good. Honest responses. I like that. Excellent. So I know there's a delay in, in, in the broadcast, usually for me to you. So I'll give a few of you an opportunity to respond and ask the second part of the question. So the first part of the question, I'm having approval. Yes, it is so. Where people say they hear the law. They hear about the law. They hear about the commandments. You have to keep the commandments. And it's always presented to you as a list of things that you should not do. Do not lie. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Do not covet. 
You must keep the Sabbath day. Do not bow to other gods. Excellent. You've answered me very honestly because that's exactly the truth. Here is the second part of the question. How many of you have ever heard the consequences for those same commandments? We're not going beyond them yet. The same commandments that they say you have to keep. How many of you, Roxanne, good to see you, have ever heard anybody tell you the consequences for breaking them within the same law? We're speaking to, if they say you have to keep the law, we're talking about the 10 only, as they say 10. How many of you have been taught about the consequences for breaking any one of those? Let's see what the responses will be like now. You are presented with the law as a list of things. You shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that. Now tell me how many of you have ever heard of the consequences being taught to you just as energetically as what you shouldn't do, as the instruction. I have one never. We're going somewhere with this tonight. Okay, one person say hell, they say. <laughs> hell. <huh? laughs> okay. And I like that, Loret. Let, 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 let's, re let's keep Loret's answer in mind. Elton said he's never heard the consequence. This is so critical. This is so vital right here. If you're following this broadcast, then you notice that most of you who responded, Shalom Cindy, good to see you. Most of you responded said you did hear the law being taught as you shouldn't do. Apostle Stephen said a new version. They will say the wages of sin. Ah, I love it. Exactly. They say the wages of sin is death. Okay, good. Saints, let me tell you or ask you a third question. And this is where my, my, my uh, years of teaching is coming alive here in terms of secular job or education, my, in, in education fee. As I'm speaking to you, hopefully some of you begin to have the light of understanding and your mind will be enlightened to say, hey, how could people keep giving me a list of things I should and shouldn't do? But they do not tell me the consequences. So now, Nigel as well said that say, they'll say you go to hell. And I'll touch on Romans 3 where Apostle Stephen spoke about. Now, third question. Can any one of you, if you don't know, you don't know, that's fine. But can any one of you say if you have ever seen on one occasion... Yahweh telling Yisrael through Moshe the prophet that he'll go to hell. Oh, this is good. This is so important to you tonight. The church tells you today, you'll go to hell if you don't keep Shabbat. And they're going to the Ten Commandments from Exodus 20 from Deuteronomy 5. Here's my question to you. Can you cite one occasion in the Old Testament when it speaks to the law where Yahweh ever told the Israel to put them in hell. If they broke any of the commandments. Shalom Prophet Eshenir, so good to see you. Shalom Doret, blessings. Ah, we're going somewhere with this tonight. Because as I'm teaching on the law, you recognize the challenge that false teachers have. Thank you for being here with us, Apostle Stephen. You recognize the trouble here? There is absolutely zero account in the Old Covenant of Yahweh telling Yeshua they'll go to hell for breaking his law. Never did he say that. The law of Moshe does not have hell attached to it. Now let's go to what, what they like to tell you. Shaul wrote writing to the Roman church. As I said tonight, this is all about meat, please. Shaul, in writing to the Roman church, he wrote to two sets of people. 
And most people like to teach you the law don't even understand that. But they want to be teachers of the law. He told the people at Rome in the early part, or let me describe it to people. Shaul wrote to Hebrew people at Rome and he wrote to Gentiles at Rome in the same letter. And I'll show you it in text, in scripture. In Romans, he said to them, you who know the law, you who teach the law, you don't even know it yourself. Or you say you know the law. Shalom Nai. You want to be teachers of the law? And he said, because of you, Yahweh's name is blasphemed among Gentiles. Now it's obvious that he's speaking to two sets of people. Because he's saying to one set in the early part of Romans, because of you, Yahweh's name is blasphemed among Gentiles. Now, he won't tell Gentiles that Yahweh's name is blasphemed among Gentiles. Obviously, most of you are smart enough to understand that. Somebody please type the pastor. Bab should go out and uh, leave and return to the broadcast because she's losing sound. Nobody else said so. If anybody else is losing sound, let me know, please. Yahweh is giving the apostle Shaul wisdom. And that wisdom is going to be applied to you tonight so that you can receive it and you can, as I say again, make a firm defense or proclamation about your faith regarding the law. Thank you, I appreciate that. So when Shaul says, the wages of sin is death, the church likes to say that from Romans chapter 3. But what they don't understand is, to whom did he say the wages of sin is death? What does that say? Now that's a casual statement, a light statement, and people have to preach it all the time. But you have to understand that those who heard that letter being read, knew exactly what that statement means, the wages of sin is death. Saints, that statement spoke to the law of Moshe, where you were stoned to death. Let's take our time now. The, the Hebrew people in, who knew that, knew that that statement had a lot to do with the stoning principle. The consequence. If you're caught in the act of adultery, for example, the wages of that sin is death. There was a very clear understanding Remember in, 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 in the scripture, in Exodus, when the man went out to gather sticks on, on the day when he should have rested, Moshe said, Yahweh, what do we do with him? Because we've never dealt with this before. Yahweh said to kill that person for breaking Shabbat. He didn't say the person will go to hell. He did not say the person must continue living and one day I'll put him in hell. Fornication carried the death sentence. He did not say, okay, well, let him fornicate and have fun and not a big deal. And one day I'll put them in hell. So if, you, if, you, if you're with me and if the broadcast is still fine, you would notice that those who tell you to keep the law create a consequence that the law never had. Which means that they're adding to Yahweh's word. Perfect, Pastor Babs. You don't have the luxury of saying these are the list of things you shouldn't do. And if somebody does them, you don't say, you then, then it says, okay, we wouldn't follow Yahweh's prescribed consequence because we're in a new age. What we'll do is we'll say to go to hell. Apostle, I love <laughs> Thank you so much, Apostle Stephen. We're going in tonight. So, <laughs> Yeshua kept the law. That's what they say. He died for, to give us power to keep the law. That's what, exactly that's what the false teachers say. That is what Rak Hakodesh is given to you to keep the law. Well, we'll see. We'll see in a minute.
Because that's what the false teachers love to say. He gave us his spirit. I've heard Adventists say that, and now somebody else who was with Korah saying the same thing. Kisa, oh, he's given us his spirit to help us to keep the law? Let's see then. We go to the text. You have not been taught, no one that I've ever known has been taught or teaches the law of Moshi with the consequences attached to it. No one has taught the Ten Commandments, as they say, with the consequences attached to that Ten. So here's my next question for you. Is there any law in your country where you reside, wherever you are, wherever you are, is there any law wherever you're living that has zero consequences attached to it? In other words, are you given just the raw law and that's it? So pay your taxes since it's tax season in the U.S. approaching. If you don't pay your taxes, whatever, no big deal. Just pay your taxes. That's the law. Pay your taxes. Drive on the right-hand side of the road. If you drive on the left-hand side of the road, don't worry about that. When there's a red light, stop at the red light. You don't stop at the red light, we're not talking about any consequences here. Because we're in a new age. So all we do, we'll give you a list of things that you have to follow. And if you don't follow them, our lips are sealed regarding consequences. Is that the situation? I'm asking, and it's not a stupid question. Thank you, Apostle. This is not a stupid question. This is an enlightening question for you to understand something here. That people who are insisting that you keep the law cannot even preach the consequences of it from the same law. So if Yahweh says that you must not lie, that's the instruction. You have to preach the consequences that are attached to that instruction or you've not, teach, you've not preached the law. The law is not just about what you should not do. It has to be consequences. For every law that you break, there has to be a consequence attached to it or, or a number of consequences. Thank you, Pastor Rich. All laws have consequences. So how do we have people trying to tell us that you have to keep the law? Ruach HaKadosh is given for us to keep the law. So where are the consequences? And I say to you again, that hell is not a consequence written in the law of Moshe. Never did Moshe tell Yeshua, you go to hell if you don't keep Shabbat. You go to hell. If you if 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 you if you covet some your neighbor's sheep. So my question to those who would li like to talk about keeping law, Brady Nooks and all you now Keith says join them. Where are the words about the consequences? Where are those words? We need to see the law teachers present the consequences. So look at this one. A law of Yahweh states, Honor your mother and your father, that your days may be long in the earth. Look at this now. I have not heard one of them preach on the consequence for not doing that. But I'll preach on the consequence to you tonight, and I hope that Bradley Knox, Keith, to Anthony, any one of you, can say Plainly, pl type it as plainly as ever. Lawrence James, all you, Everton Clark, all you watch me in secret. Type it plainly that you are prepared to live by the consequence of the law. Honor your mother and your father is the law according to them in the Ten Commandments because it's written there. Exodus 20, Deuteronomy 5. Hear this now. Yahweh through Moshe said plainly. Yahweh told Moshe to teach Israel this consequence. If you have a rebellious child who does not listen to your instructions or the instruction of his mother, listen to the consequence. Take that child to the elders of the city. Say to the elder, this child of mine is stubborn, does not listen. 
He is rude and doesn't listen to his instru parents' instruction. Disobedient. He is. The consequence now is the men of the city, the men of the city shall stone him to death outside of the city. Let me say this slowly for you. Honor your mother and your father is the law. The consequences, if you don't honor your mother and your father and you're rude and you're disrespectful according to the law of Moshi, take that child to the elders. Present the child to the elders. Say, this child is stubborn. This child is not listen to me. This child is rebellious. And this child is disobedient. The elders of the city then instruct the men of the city to stone your child to death. That's 100% Connected to honor your mother and your father. My question tonight is about, is about a lot of questions, just to, like I said, to bring the enlightenment to you. Who among you on this broadcast have ever heard those who say you must keep the law preach that? Who? Have you ever heard them preach about what happens to a rebellious child according to the law? Now, if we're, going to, if we're going to keep the law, we have to keep the consequences of the law because the law is not free of... The law encapsulates consequences as well. You cannot tell anybody, keep the law, but forget consequences. How then do Adventists and others tell you you have to keep the law? Rak Hakadesh is given to you. Holy Spirit is given to you to keep the law. So where is he in reference to consequences? Is he given to you to keep the law <laughs> and then he eliminates all consequences? Saints, keeping the law means you are going to institute the consequence or implement the consequence among those who break it. Talk to me. Keeping the law means that anybody who breaks the law has to suffer some consequence. That's what the law is about. Thank you, Sister Mish. The law comes with consequences. So how we have these new age teachers now who are all telling you, oh, we have to keep the law. Yahweh gave us his spirit to keep the law. But what about the consequences of the law? The law doesn't have instructions and no consequence. If you remove the consequence from Yahweh's law, you have indeed tampered with the law. Who instructed you to do so? Who gave these people the right to remove penalties? I'll tell you who. Their minds. The folly of their minds. The God of their minds, which is themselves, because they know they cannot abide by Yahweh's law, they act as though consequences don't exist. Good night, Kev. Good to see you, Dehart. <laughs> now, look at this Yahweh. Let's look at another one that, that you won't hear people preaching about. In Deuteronomy chapter 19, I think it is. Yes, 19. Yahweh said in Deuteronomy 19, When Yahweh, from verse 1, your God cuts off nations whose land Yahweh your God is given to you. And you take their place and settle there in their cities and houses. You are to set aside three cities for yourselves in your land that Yahweh your God is giving you to possess. Divide the territory of your land, which Yahweh your God is giving you to inherit, into three parts. Look at this. And prepare the roads so that any killer can flee to those cities. Oh, that's good, Pastor Reg. You can't keep, you, you're good. You're on it. You're in the spirit as Regina says. Look at this. So Yahweh says to them, when you get to this the city, that's the law. That's the law. That's teaching. Torah means to teach. 
So Yahweh says in his law, when you get to this land I'm giving you, divide it into three. You have to build roads. Look at this now. When somebody kills someone accidentally, Yahweh said, for example, it's in the text. If somebody's felling a tree, the tree falls and hits somebody in the head and they die. He said that person must run or the axe flies out, hits the person in the head. Let them run to the city. There's refuge there because the relative of the person who died may want to seek revenge. All right. Look at the next aspect of the law. We're talking about the law that you say. So thou shall not kill is in the law. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. Thou from King James Version. You must not kill is an instruction in the law. Yahweh said, but. So you have cities of refuge. But in the city of refuge now, look at this. If somebody premeditates, has in his mind, I will kill this man. Because I don't like him, whatever it is. And he kills a person on purpose. Runs to the city of refuge to hide from the relatives of the person. I'm giving you the law, the consequence of the law that speaks to you must not kill. Yahweh said, once a person gets to that city who has murdered someone, you must take him back to where or the place from which he ran. I'm read it for you right now. If Deuteronomy chapter 19 verse 11, I'm reading the law for you people who like to teach the law and don't want to keep it. You must not murder, King James Version, thou shalt not kill. Fine. What's the consequence? Let's see the consequence here and see if you're keeping the law. The consequence of murder is this. However, if someone hates his fellow member of the community, lies in wait for him, attacks him, strikes him a death blow, then flees into one of these three cities. Look at this. Then the leaders of his own town are to send and bring him back from there. Look at this. And hand him over to the next of kin avenger. To be put to death. You are not to pity him. Let me read for you. Deuteronomy 19 verse 13. Rather you must put an end to the shedding of innocent blood in Israel. Then things will go well with you. Okay. So that one is for thou shall not kill. How many of you have ever heard these Adventists and all these new age, new thinkers who say you have to keep the law preach that for you must murder? We're not going outside of the Ten Commandments because that's all they could talk to you about. They, they, that's a law. There are hundreds of laws in Israel. But since you want to zone in on the Ten, let's talk about the Ten. You are commanded to not have pity in the law of Moshe for a murderer. Instead, he must be taken to people so they can kill him. Oh. Wait a second. Did Yahweh tell you? Good to see you, Mama James. Did Yahweh tell one of you Adventists and others who want to keep this law story here? That you are now in, in the year 5780 according to the Hebrew calendar or 2020 according to Pope Gregory's calendar, you are now free to eliminate the consequence of killing somebody? The only consequence for murder in Yeshua was to kill the person. It's written here. Kill him. You're mighty silent Adventists and, 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 and all of you, Keith and all of you. Because you can make a shipwreck of people's faith if this is not taught the way it should be taught. Apostle Stephen, you're on fire tonight. You're on fire this evening. 
So watch this. To the Roman sentry who said, you know the law. You are familiar with the law. You know the consequences of the law. And you're trying to teach it to Gentile people who don't know it. To the Gentile show who said, you were once these things, you once did these things. Why he said that? Because the Gentiles never had the law. So he said, you used to do these things. You once partook of this because that's what you are by nature. That's what you were. The, Mama Rose, good to see you. The Hebrew people died based on the law. The Gentiles people enjoyed life because they had no law. Yahweh, in dealing with Israel, was hardcore in reference to what happens to you when you break it. I told you, even breaking Shabbat, he said to kill the man. Where are the consequences? All right. Now, Apostle Stephen Branham would have been in law enforcement for years, so he knows he can surely speak to this clearly. Hallelujah. Look at this. Apostle, and I'm asking Apostle Stephen, who was in law enforcement, so he's answering me from what he knows to be the law. If you were not in law enforcement, you can't answer. But some of you will try anyway. So, Pastor Stephen, you're here. If you or were, you're on the highway, you fall, somebody is racing on the highway at, let's say, 140 miles an hour. They're just flying. So, they, they're endangering people's lives. They're racing on the highway. They have an unlicensed firearm loaded with drugs in the car. They're driving under the influence, I mean they just have a rap sheet ahead of them. You managed to get this person to stop. I'm asking the apostle Stephen the question. The person has broken the law. Look at this. As a law enforcement agent, if you stop the person, Shalom Ryan, good to see you. And you look at a person who would have broken all of these laws and say to them, okay, you broke all the laws. You return to your car and just drives away. Have you also violated the law in terms of failure to enforce what you know to be the law? I hope I asked the question clearly, Apostle Stephen. If you do not in that moment seek to deal with what you know to be the legal aspect of the right thing to do legally, would you not have been guilty of breaking the law as well? Because for these actions, there's supposed to be something done by you, the law, enforcement, the law enforcement agent, which would, of course, lead to a trial. Let's see what Apostle Stephen will say. He's, if he just joined, Apostle Stephen, I'm asking the question because he was in law, was in law enforcement, he's trained. So I'm going to ask him about his ignorant. If he sees somebody on the, on the freeway, Driving at 140 miles an hour on the highway. There you go. Dereliction of duty is called. So he knows somebody's racing on the road 140 miles an hour. They have an unlicensed firearm. They, they're driving under the influence. The car is loaded with illicit, illegal drugs. He stops the person and simply says, you've broken the law. And he drives away. That action from an officer of the law is also illegal. There you see, he just responded. What did Yahweh keep telling Israel? Kill them so this would not be among you. Just what Apostle is saying. You will not endanger others. The law is those who are breaking it, kill them. So they would not cause other people to stumble. A woman in adultery, kill her. So she wouldn't cause whoredom to come to Israel. Fornication, kill them. So they would not be whoring in Israel. Why? 
Because Yahweh knows if you fail to implement the consequences, you are encouraging the action. Or are we going somewhere with this tonight? If you fail to implement the consequence, you are encouraging the action. So to tell somebody, you must not commit adultery. And they commit adultery and you say, well, you'll go to hell. You've not even, you, you've gone beyond the law of Moshe. You've just stepped outside of what is the law of Moshe in reference to Exodus. Good to see you, Owen. The next trap is this. If the law of Yahweh, according to you, teachers, never changed, then how did you change the consequence? <laughs> if the law, teachers of the law, never changed, how did you change the consequence now in this age? I can promise you, Adventists will flee this broadcast, as well as those who now sing, you have to keep the law. Oh, Apostle, you're on it tonight. <laughs> so Yahweh, I'll go to Galatians. <laughs> Yahweh told the church of Galatia, Galatia, chapter 6, Brothers, if you see a brother overtaken in sin, did he say kill him? Come here, I'll talk. Yahweh Shaul told the church of Galatia, if you see your brother overtaken in a sin, did he say to kill him? You say the wage of sin is death. So let's see if this is what's happening now. Did, did Shaul say to kill the person who's overtaken in a fault? No. He said to restore him. The law of Moshe never said to restore an adulterer. It never said to restore a murderer. It said take the murderer to the city where he committed the act and let him kill him. It never said to restore a rebellious child. It said to take a child outside of the city. Let the men of the city stone the child. If you're going to keep the law, then let's keep the law then. What did Shaul say to the church at uh, Galatia? He said, if you see a brother overtaken in a sin, what must you do to him? Restore him. It, with the spirit of meekness, which is to be cautious as to how you handle him. That was never written in the law. Never. Nowhere in the law do you see that statement. So how are you applying it now? The new age law keepers are seeking to stir into the law grace. You don't have the luxury. You don't have the liberty to say to Yahweh, I know that your law states these are the consequences, but I choose to add some, to stir, to pour some grace into it and stir the pot so I can feel good about myself since I know for sure that I cannot apply the law. I'm going to read something for you all tonight. Very straightforward, not too extensive. Thank you, Pastor Reg. Thank you for being here, Mel. Watch this. If, according to the law, you commit adultery, you're dead. You don't have restoration in that. I'll read the law to you in the concise format, Exodus chapter 20. And I'm doing this for a reason. 
Just bear with me. Bear with me and you'll see before this broadcast is over why I'm doing this. The preamble to the law, Exodus chapter 20 verse 1. It's not pretty long. I am Yahweh your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the abode of slavery. You are to have no other gods before me. I'm reading this and I'll ask you questions, so pay careful attention. You're in class tonight. This is hardcore teaching session here, so don't sleep and don't be distracted, please. <laughs> you are not to make for yourselves a carved image of any kind of representation or any kind of representation of anything in the heaven above or on the earth beneath or the water below the shoreline. You are not to bow down to them or to serve them. For I, Yahweh, your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but displaying grace to the thousand generations of those who love me and obey my commandment. You are not to use lightly the name of Yahweh your God, because Yahweh will not leave unpunished someone who uses his name lightly. Remember the day, Shabbat, to set it apart for Elohim. You have six days to labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is Shabbat for Yahweh, your God. On it, you are not to do any kind of work. Not you, your son, your daughter, nor your male slave or your female slave. Shalom, Mama Ward. Nor your livestock. And not the foreigner staying with you inside the gates of your property. For in six days Yahweh made the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. This is why Yahweh blessed the day, Shabbat and separated it for himself. Honor your mother and your father, so that you may live long in the land which Yahweh your God has given you. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false evidence against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house. Do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female slave, his all his ox, his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. All right. Look at this carefully here. Listen to the question very carefully. This is now dealing with the teaching that says you have to have Ruach HaKadosh or Holy Spirit to keep the law. Hear me carefully here. Of the things that I have read to you, is there anyone on this broadcast that can honestly say to me that you need Holy Spirit to do these things in a day? That's not a trick question either. While you're thinking about it, a rich young ruler came to Messiah Yeshua and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Yeshua said, you know, Honor your mother and your father. You mustn't commit adultery. You mustn't steal. You mustn't kill. You know it. Listen to the young man's words as you're typing. He said that I have kept all of these things from my youth, but still I lack something. While you're typing now, let me ask you a question again, based on what I just said to you. Do you need Holy Spirit to do those, and it's more than 10, by the way, but those 10 things that they say you have to do? While you're typing, remember the rich young ruler came to Messiah Yeshua and he said, Good teacher, I want to know what I need to do to inherit eternal life. Messiah started to listing some of the Ten Commandments, as they say. And the young man said, I did all of them from my youth, but I still know that I lack something. Okay. So the new age teachers who say to you that you need Holy Spirit to keep the law, did the rich young ruler have Holy Spirit? 
Remember he said he kept all and Yeshua didn't say you lied. Because Yeshua knew the hearts of all men. He never told rich and ruler you lying. Ah, Apostle, thank you for being here, Apostle Stephen. The rich young ruler did not have Holy Spirit, but he kept the law. And still he lacked something. Okay then. Okay then. So how do you now tell me in this age that I need Holy Spirit to keep what the rich young ruler was doing without him? Why? Why would you tell me now that I need Holy Spirit to do what the rich young ruler was doing without him? Is anybody home? Messiah said, you have something else to do to be perfect. Sell what you have. Give it to the poor. And come and follow me. He left sorrowfully. Because he had much. Hear this now. Hear this right here. Which law of Moshi? has ever instructed Israel to sell all they have and give to poor people? Which one will ten? Shalom, Pastor Mel. You're right on time. Which of the ten commandments says you must sell what you have and give to the poor? Shalom, Rishana. Good to see you. Shalom. The law doesn't guide you, uh, uh, Owen. The scripture says those who are led by Yahweh's spirit are his sons, not the law. Yahweh never give his spirit to you so that you can go back to keeping the law of Moshe. Yahweh's spirit is given to us. Preachers tell you about Corinthians, they don't, they don't, they do not quote the text correctly or right, properly. They say to you, okay, uh, I have not seen, and they quote from the old covenant, neither has ear heard, neither has it entered into the mind of man that which the Lord has in store for those who love him, and they stop because they're ignorant and they don't know to read. Look at this. Because the same scripture says, I have not seen, neither have ear heard, nor has it entered into the mind of man what the, the things that are in store for those who love me. Look at this. But it has been made known to you. Okay. So you have the spirit of Yahweh to know the mind of Yahweh. Once you know the mind of Yahweh, you don't have to go to the laws of Moshe. I hope somebody get that. We have been given the spirit of Messiah to know the mind of Messiah so you don't have to go back to the law of Moshe to know it. Because the mind of Yahweh concerning the law of Moshe was for sin to be made prominent so you can know that you need a savior. That it doesn't matter what I do, sin is before me. Now, I don't have the Bible with me, do I? Okay, I think I've moved it. But I'm teaching to you tonight to really get you to understand the danger of becoming like the Galatians. Shaul said you are stupid Galatians. 
to go back to who bewitched you? Oh, you stupid Galatians. Who has bewitched you? Who has gotten to your mind with a spell for you to think that you must go back to keeping the law? Look at this. There's a Bible called the Hallelujah Bible. Hallelujah Bible. It bears, and that's what Keith Anthony uses, and I'm, I don't speak subliminally, I tell you straight up. And that's where her error came from. I found out afterwards why she's so erroneous. Because the Hallelujah Bible is one of the most erroneous translations you can find. It was a deliberate act for persons to try their best to direct you to a certain path. So look at some of the probably the Hallelujah Bible. Number one, the Hallelujah Scriptures, as they're called, says that there's going to be a renewed covenant. And that's what Kisadni started teaching. There is a renewed covenant. Saints, one word can get your whole faith in trouble if you're not led by Yahweh. Look at this. Because in the garden, the serpent told the woman one word. Yahweh said, you shall surely die. The serpent said, you shall not surely die. He included one word, not. And it changed everything about the equation. The Hallelujah Scriptures, Yahweh said, I will make a new covenant with them. Hallelujah Scripture says, I'll make a renewed, just a prefix. And it changes everything that I'll make known to you tonight. Everything. Look at this. Because myself and my father had the exact thought process I was about to teach in this in this session. And he said it to me exactly a few weeks ago that I present you tonight. If there is a renewed covenant in terms of the law, it means that everything in the law is revived. And I present something to you tonight. I hope that you, you last or you stay. We're about to close in a few moments. Yahweh has what is called the old covenant, like you'd like to speak about it, and a new covenant. They say, no, it's a renewed covenant, so you have to keep go, go back to the old one. If it is a renewed, the hallelujah scriptures say it's a renewed covenant. Girlfriend, if you hear me, please bring the hallelujah scriptures. I think it's in the library somewhere. Can you bring it for me, please? A, a kind of mauvish purple, purple book. I don't know colors too well. If there's going to be a renewed covenant, then it means that everything in the old is revived. Which means the consequences are still present. Look at this. And look at this carefully. I met a couple. They were once married. They got divorced. I met other couples who were married, never divorced, and they said they want to renew their marriage vows, as they call it. Okay. So you have one set, one couple who was divorced. I've met other couples who were not divorced, but they say they want to renew, as they say, their vows. After 25 years, after 30 years, after 40 years, after 50 years. Now, saints, if they're going to renew their vows, is there anything new that they can add to what they are renewing? Be careful how you answer now. Think before you answer the question. When you are renewing your driver's license, when you are renewing your married vows, do they take the vow that you have and say this is what you're going to repeat? What you said before, you are renewing it? I'll wait for your answer and move to the next point. If they are renewing their vows, there's no immediate delay. Would they not say the same vow that they had?
could. So in renewing your wedding vows, you simply repeat what you said before. You have renewed it. Because you've repeated what you once said. Thank you, Nye. When you go to renew your driver's license, what is on it is what is given back to you. Just the date is updated. Now, as I've said, I met another couple. And the other couple were once divorced. They were married, they got divorced. They said that they would like to be remarried. I said, okay, you go to the legal aspect, go to the court and have the legal part done. Then I'll do the spiritual aspect of your marriage. They said, great. When they went to have the legal requirements fulfilled, You need to hear this now. The people at the legal office said to them, this is a new marriage. You have to have a new marriage certificate. Do you hear the difference between renewed vows and remarriage? New marriage. They said this is treated as a new marriage entry. Oh my, I hope that you get this. I pray that you get this tonight. They were divorced. When they went back to say, okay, we were divorced. We want, we want to get back together. People say, no, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't work at that. No, 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 no. The certificate you had before is done with. Because you were divorced. To us, you are not married. You need a new marriage certificate. You are not recognized as some old couple. You are not recognized as a new couple. In this nation. Man. The, 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 the laws of man. Is as clear as that. When you are renewing your vows. You are not divorced. But when you are divorced. You can't go to anybody. Say I'm here to renew my vows. The law doesn't work like that. The law says you have to be. Given. A brand new. Marriage certificate. Or you're not married. So she is now lawfully married to the man. Okay then. So Yahweh never told Israel he'll make a renewed covenant with them. Look at where this bust the bubbles of the garbage. Because did Yahweh not say that I am forever married to the backslider? Did Yahweh not tell Yushal that I am forever married to the backslider? Talk to me. Did he not say that? Did he not say I am forever married to you? Let's get this clear.
But you, you abandoned me. You walked away from me. You've, you, you've caused an issue to arise. So I will make a new covenant with you. Look at the new covenant. I'm writing something in your mind. Because the old covenant had written something on stone. <laughs> this one right here is trouble. Do you understand, saints? And I pray that you do. That if Yahweh writes a new covenant, I'll write my laws on their minds, in their heart, they live. The deep part of them I will write, I'll etch my teaching. Look at this. Saints who are hearing me. And again, Apostle Lambert and I, another apostle, same page. If Yahweh writes his law in your mind, you Adventists and you New Age teachers, why do you have a Bible to read it from? Why? Why are you carrying a Bible if his laws are written in your mind? Adventist, you could answer because you like to say his laws are written in our heart. If Yahweh writes his law on my mind, why do I need to carry a Bible to remember it? If you ever have to open a Bible to read Deuteronomy to see what Moshe said, his laws are not on your mind. Because you never have to read from a book what's written in your mind. If I ask you, what is your name? You have to go to find some book to read to see. Oh, let me see. I can't remember what my name is. Let me see if I can find it. No. You say exactly what it is because you know your name. Where do you live? You say it. Unless you move into a new area, you don't know where it is. Good. Whatever is written in your mind, you don't have to find a book to remember. So all you who go to open your Bible to preach from on Sunday or Saturday and say, well, okay, his laws are written in my mind. No, they're not. You're reading it from a book. Israel will not have a Bible because there's coming a day when persecution will be so strong for them they'll not be allowed to have anything called scripture. How can you be reading from a Bible what's written in your mind? Watch this. The consequences of the law of breaking the law are also written on the mind of Yahweh's people. Don't miss that. He wouldn't just write, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't do that, you shouldn't, do that, and then walk away. The consequences are also written in their minds. On whose mind? The house of Israel, the house of Yehuda. Read him, Yahu the prophet. It's absolutely clear, pellucid. I will write my law on the mind of those of the house of Israel and the house of Yehuda, not the Gentiles. Yahweh said, the day is coming when I shall make a new covenant. So this Hallelujah Bible has thrown keys away, of course, and many others. Yahweh never said, I make a renewed covenant with Israel. Because if he's divorced, according to your teaching, then obviously, if they've walked away and broken covenant through idolatry, then how is he making something renewed?
Brother T, good to see you. Shalom. Yahweh said, I'll make a new covenant. Written in their mind. They don't have to read it. They know it from the, from the lips. They speak it immediately. It's etched in your mind, in their minds. Why? Because once it's written in their minds, it cannot be deceived. I hope you get this. When the age or the time to, to save Yisrael has come, which is the end of the age, when the time to, to save, to rescue Yisrael, when Messiah returns for his chosen people, they will have etched in their minds the law. So there's no way they'll be deceived. They won't be flipping Bible page like you trying to figure out, oh, oh let me see what Deuteronomy says. Uh, let me see what, what Leviticus says. No, it doesn't work like that. How do you know a false teacher? Easy. A false teacher of the law never teaches the consequences of it. You know they're false. They're 100% false. The easiest way, and I'm recapitulating now, or I'm ending, sorry. The false teachers of the law will never teach the consequences that are in the law. Always know that. That's your first sign. Easy. Once you hear them yapping their mouth and they don't teach you consequence, walk away because they're wasting your time. And they, they ask them, what are the consequences? If they say you go to hell, they've lied. Because Moshe never told Israel they go to hell. If they say the wage of sin is death, say what? Death in what way? By what means? If they say, well, you'll die later on in their judgment, lie. Yahweh never told Moshe that. In reference to the law. Or what they call the law. Next, the Hallelujah Bible has the name of the Messiah as Yahshua. Uh, let me inform you, please. Yah, Y-A-H-S-H-U-A, is not a Hebrew word. Let me make that clear to you. Y-A-H, Yahshua, S-H-U-A, is not a Hebrew word. It does not exist in Hebrew. It is a term that was coined in the 1960s, which means that it is much younger than even the erroneous name Jesus. So the Messiah cannot be given a name in 1961, 62, thereabout. The Messiah, Yeshua, could not have been given the name Yahshua when the first recorded usage of that name anywhere in the world was in the 1960s, I think, or 1970s, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the sacred name movement. Yahshua is not a Hebrew word. I just told you it is not found in any manuscript, and it is more recent than Jesus, which is erroneous. So how can you give the Messiah a name that never existed when he was 1960? That's when you arrive at his name? Do not read the Hallelujah Bible. I have never prescribed it. I have never, I have never said any one day that any saint should be reading the Hallelujah Scriptures. Never have I said that. Because I know that it, is, it has some of the weakest translations you can ever find. This complete Jewish Bible, I explain to you repeatedly, this is not the sole translation that is used because it is also bearing some errors in it. How do you know that possible? Because those who are led by Yahweh's spirit are his, not those who are led by this. This has the name Yeshua in it, I told you, and the writer, try, the translator tries his best to take it back to a very Hebrew culture. So he tries to, to push more or less, okay, legalistic and the rest of it.
right past Reg, you try to tell you, okay, I came in my father's name, so my name is Yahshua. That is absolutely untrue. And while you add it, maybe I help some people who, who hear it as well. The, the reasoning was, the Messiah said, I came in my father's name, so um, my name is Yahshua. No, 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 no. So let's see if that, that argument holds true. In Shemuel, I think it's around the account scripture. David, my name is David, David said to Goliath, you come to me with a sling, with a spear, and a sword, but I come to you in the name of Yahweh. Hold on a minute. So if Yeshua's name, if Yeshua say, I came in my father's name, and his name has to be Yahshua, how did David's name become David? If he came in the name of Yahweh. Do you see how easily the arguments fly through the window? Coming in the name is coming in the authority of. I am vested with the authority of this person to act. That's all it means. The governor's general of the world who, who come to you, they say, okay, I came in the name of the queen. What does that mean? That they don't carry Queen Elizabeth's name? Or Isabella's name? But if we're going back to the law, the hallelujah scriptures, the, the, and I don't even know who the authors are, because they don't say precisely who the, who, who the, the, the translators are, but they're trying their best to get you to keep the law. <laughs> yes, Pastor Reg, that should be in his name. They're trying to be... His name should be Yah, Yah David. <laughs> they're trying their best to get you to keep the law. And in an effort to do so, they just try, they, they, they twist and bend and shuffle and everything they can scripture. So you can, okay then, hey, there's a renewed covenant. And if it's a renewed covenant, it means that you go back to keeping the law. Saints, to keep the law means you also keep the consequences. Just remember that in your mind, please. Remember, if you therefore have a stubborn child and you keep the law, you have to stone that child to death. The men of your city must stone the child. If the men of your city refuse to stone the child, they are breaking the law. If you refuse to turn a murderer over to the kinsmen of, those, of, the, of the murdered person, Yahweh said it will not be well with you. It will not be well with you. So you have an immediate reaction from heaven in reference to the law. You keep a murderer around you and you want to have pity on a murderer, you will not succeed. That's the law. Oh, this is good. Any one of you Adventists Sabbath keepers, whatever you want to say you are, Kisa all y'all, who would have ever taken a loan from the bank, you have broken the law. You have put your finger in usury. If you bought a house by loan, you have broken the law. If you took things from courts on higher purchase and you paid interest, you have broken the law because you participated in usury. Talk to me now. You were never supposed to do that. So how are you keeping the law, but your house is paid for? By, 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 by. With, 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 with 10%, 15%, 19% interest. You should be living in a house that you paid for cash or you built. Even the phone that you take to use, if you got it 
from Verizon, T-Mobile, or anywhere, and you're paying for it every month, with interest added, you are breaking the law because you are participating in usury. If you take a car from a dealership and you're paying a, a note on the car every month and you end up paying interest, you are breaking the law because you're participating in usury. So when you get in your car and drive to Sabbath or drive every drive to say, oh, I'm, I'm honoring the Lord, you are breaking the law of Yahweh. And there are consequences for all of those. You don't have saints as a bid you shalom. None of us has the luxury. You cannot do it naturally and you dare not do it spiritually. None of us has the luxury of saying that because in my country this law is a bit too harsh, I would not abide by it. I'll just, I'll just invent some other thing. You don't have the luxury. You cannot do that with Yahweh. You cannot tell Yahweh that because Guyana doesn't, doesn't permit you or the USA doesn't permit you, or New Jersey doesn't permit you to kill anybody who breaks the law, then I, I can't kill them. You are breaking the law. I hope that this broadcast has brought you clarity and has made it very, very clear to you tonight that those who claim to keep it as Scripture says, they're the first ones to break it. Because they don't even know what the law entails. The most juvenile, the most immature teachers are those who like to preach that you must keep the law when they don't even understand that the law has in it, as a part of it, consequences for failure to abide by what is written. I hope that this broadcast has brought you clarity. It is my prayer that it did. I sincerely hope that you are now better equipped to speak to this matter of law keeping and I haven't even touched on quarter on a quarter of what was written in Torah but just for the Ten Commandments you see honoring your mother your father has stoning to death adultery is stoned to death if the person is a murderer they're taken and they, 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 they're killed if the law doesn't change then the consequences have not changed either because the consequences are the law as well. I bid you all shalom. Thank you for your input. I really appreciate the feedback and I enjoy the interactions we had. I love the fact that you were willing to answer as best as you could. Amen? Blessings and shalom to you saints. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Those of you in New Jersey, be encouraged. Be strengthened. Yahweh takes us through seasons and turns but at the end of the day I said to you Yahweh takes us as long as Yahweh is with you New Jersey co New Jersey you are always in a position of perfection Yahweh is with you may Shalom keep you may his Shalom abide with you May you stand strong through it all. Shalom. Shalom, Muhammad. Shalom to all of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever you are in this world, Yahweh has you positioned in a place called perfection. That's his wisdom and his will at work. Rest in it and enjoy his shalom.